Ever since Bungie abandoned Halo to work on Destiny and was replaced by 343 Industries, the franchise has been polarizing to say the least. Many argue that Halo 4 and 5 failed to live up to the franchise's standards, mainly because they felt nothing like the prior games in many regards. That said, it wouldn't be irrational to believe Halo Infinite would be another letdown, especially considering its suspiciously long development time and year-long delay. But somehow, 343 manages to create a game that is both faithful to its predecessors and surpasses them in ambition, scope, and creativity. Among many things, Halo is known for its general understanding of versatility, and it's more obvious than ever with Infinite's expansive roster of guns. Of course, it features staples of the franchise such as the Assault Rifle, Needler, and Plasma Pistol, which all feel just about as good as they ever have thanks to detailed animations and spectacular sound design. These three weapons in particular are great examples of the diversity in your arsenal. The Assault Rifle is good for mid-range gunplay, the Needler is helpful for when you don't have the facilities to aim precisely, and the Plasma Pistol allows you to charge up a powerful beam while in safety to be shot directly at an enemy's head when you get back into battle. While these weapons lead way to a handful of options, the various new guns in Halo Infinite provide players with more versatility than ever. My favorites would have to be the Bulldog, a highly aggressive shotgun, the Sidekick, a pistol with a quick rate of fire, and the Ravager, which spurts out plasma balls and can be used to create fires to burn enemies if you hold down the trigger long enough. It should also go without saying that Halo Infinite has fantastic artificial intelligence. Enemies make rational decisions based on your actions and are highly capable of interacting with the environment. Perhaps even more interesting than any of the guns or enemies is the brand new grappling hook that you have from the beginning. It's such an interesting piece of equipment because of how many purposes it serves. You can use it to latch onto enemies, grab weapons, and escape tight situations by building momentum, or simply grappling onto a ledge. It may not seem that significant when it comes to providing players with agency on a larger scale, but trust me, it is. Because of how easy it makes it to get around, you're able to dodge certain enemy encounters entirely. If you're really skilled, you can also use to grapple into flying vehicles, making it easier for you to traverse the map. Speaking of which, you most likely have already heard, but Infinite is an open world game. While there are a few fairly by-the-books linear levels sprinkled throughout, you're mostly free to explore its almost entirely interconnected world at your own pace. This structure, while brazen, is incredibly fitting for the franchise when you think about it. In fact, it almost feels like a reparation for how streamlined and restrictive Halo 4 and 5 felt compared to how much agency the original games gave you. Infinite simply takes that formula to the next level. Not only are you able to complete most mission objectives in whatever order you feel like, but how you get from one to another is entirely up to you. It doesn't give the player an overwhelming amount of freedom though. Many areas are barred off until you clear a horde of enemies, and the world is segregated into several smaller areas to ensure you can't just rush to the end. The latter of these two restrictions is subtly executed to make it feel natural, but the former is kind of annoying, especially due to its inconsistent implementation. The open world structure does also come at the cost of biodiversity, even though it shouldn't. When Infinite was revealed for the first time three and a half years ago, while the trailer didn't really give fans much information, it did show off some distinct locales, such as a desert, a savanna with rhinoceroses, and even a beach. None of these things are actually in the game. Instead, Zeta Halo is entirely comprised of one forest mountain biome that is blandly designed in its entirety and features almost no wildlife. The only creatures are barely even noticeable. The lack of biome and animal variety is especially disappointing considering the initial reveal of the game and the history of gorgeously designed biomes in Halo. However, Infinite just barely makes up for this with the content throughout the world. Unfortunately, it misses out on the opportunity to introduce genuine puzzle solving into the formula or anything really besides gunplay, but that's okay because it knows what it's good at. Scattered throughout its map are strongholds where you'll find yourself killing hordes of enemies to unlock some piece of equipment or simply progress within the game. While every mechanic that can be found within these areas can be found in the open world, they take a different role in such a condensed space, forcing you to think critically about how to kill loads of bad guys at a high speed. They do come with some issues though. The first and most obvious is repetition, and this can also be seen in some of the mandatory story missions. The objectives rely almost entirely around picking up batteries and putting them in the right place and blowing up beacons. The other issue is in regards to fast travel. 
After you clear certain areas, you're able to turn them into fast travel locations, and you can get to them from anywhere. However, fast travel feels slightly superfluous given the relatively small size of the world and game. Perhaps Infinite's most polarizing aspect is its story. It's written well and is simplified both so players understand better and it can be more poignant. It mainly revolves around the dynamic between three characters, Master Chief, an AI called The Weapon, and a pilot who all have well-written dialogue and great voice actors which makes them compelling. However, Halo Infinite has mainly been advertised as a good starting point for new players, and the story definitely goes against that. It's filled with references to older games, and many of its emotional highs feel too confusing or completely undeserved due to pacing issues. Thankfully though, its story isn't emphasized too heavily, so new players will be able to enjoy this game almost uninterruptedly. Overall, I'm impressed. Infinite's campaign may not necessarily be the masterpiece I was hoping for due to its environmental blandness, repetition, and inconsistencies in its story, however, its ability to recapture the magic of prior entries in the franchise and its fascinating approach to open world game design are enough to make it well worth your purchase.